During the late 1940s, Hammer had begun to experiment with ways of making their films more economical, and one of the approaches was to adapt a large house into a working studio. Several of these properties were adopted for use, including Dial Close and Cookham Dean, Gilston Park, Oakley Court and Down Place, a manor house on the banks of the Thames that would become world famous as Bray Studios. Clyburst would be the first production to be completely filmed at the property. The property had been spotted while Hammer were filming next door at Oakley Court, and when they moved in at the end of 1951, it was little more than a shell. During the Second World War, it had been requisitioned by the army and used to store supplies. A number of the surplus army greatcoats which filled the space would be appropriated by Hammer staff as protection against the bitter cold. Director Francis Searle was reported as favouring the facility thanks to the ability to shoot through multiple adjacent rooms. The overall result is an unusual level of perceived reality which would become part of the Hammer feel. Cloudburst was based on a stage play by Leo Marx and adapted by Marx and the film's director Francis Searle. Marx is perhaps best known as the screenwriter for Michael Powell's controversial film Peeping Tom. Marx took inspiration from his own life experiences for the film's narrative. For example, during the war he had been Britain's top cryptographer, in charge of an elite group of code breakers and makers, devising new methods of code encryption as part of the war effort. An almost identical function falls on Robert Preston's lead role as John Graham, a man lauded for his wartime activity and continued brilliance. In another parallel, Preston's character is shaken by the untimely death of his wife, played by Elizabeth Sellers, who is killed in a brutal car accident. In real life, Mark's fiancée had been killed during the war in a plane crash, an event which had a long-lasting impact on his work. While Marx busied himself with his wartime work to the greater good of the country, John Graham throws himself into avenging his wife's death in a blinkered campaign. Like Marx's script for Peeping Tom a decade later, this is a story which is ahead of its time, somewhat more hardened than the other Hammer thrillers, and setting up Preston's character as a captivating anti-hero, a trope that Hammer cemented with Baron Frankenstein in 1957. During the 1990s, Cloudburst was one of the titles up for a big-budget US remake as part of Hammer's deal with Warner Brothers, with Richard Donner and Martin Scorsese attached as the potential directors. It's easy to see how Cloudburst could be adopted for a modern audience. There are more than a few similarities to the Death Wish films. There's a complex morality in the British cinema of this period, and throughout the post-war Hammer product in particular. This stems, no doubt, from the frontline experiences of the film's creators in the battlefield and the struggle familiar to thousands of British men to find their way in this strange new world. In a nutshell, sometimes good people do bad things, but are they justified in doing so? Hammer's noir thrillers examine that question from both viewpoints, but don't provide a conclusive answer.